afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. John Belkowitz, and I feel like I'm coming down with a cold. We're here to learn some new and amazing things about concrete. We're focusing on resilient concrete floors this week uh, and using colloidal silica to cheat the system. I don't know if that's the nicest way of saying it, but uh, let's just set it up for you. In our industry, the resilient flooring industry, we normally have to wait somewhere between 15 and 30 days per every inch thickness of concrete for our slabs to get down to our 85% relative humidity. And sometimes we have to wait even higher, up to 180 days to get down to our moisture vapor emission rate that is required to stabilize or create a stable environment for our adhesive products that bring our tiles down to our floors and keep them there steady. Um, and we normally don't take that time. So normally for a concrete floor that's about four to six inches thick, you're looking at somewhere between 90 and 120 days and maybe even a little bit more than that. Is that how the math works out? 30 times four is 120. Yeah, it's, it's a long time and unfortunate reality is, is that we don't wait that long. Normally it's three to 14 days. So how do we turn that obstacle into an opportunity and what we've been driving at is the use of colloidal silica. And with colloidal silica, a lot of the research that we've done has shown that some colloidal silicas can be used to reduce that time to, what do they, what do they call it, the drying time? I hate that phrase. The time to get to that moisture vapor emission rate that makes it acceptable for that environment. You can reduce it by up to 10 times, sometimes even more than if you didn't use colloidal silica. Now that's a bold statement, it's a bold number, and the, the mechanisms that lead up to it, it's threefold. So the first one is, I'm not looking at my notes, or am I? So the first one is creating a more homogeneous mix. And what I mean by that is, a lot of the mixes that we, or concrete mixes that we're using to create these slabs for our resilient floors have water cementitious ratios somewhere between 0.45 and 0.55 with the average around 0.5. Now, if you use Howard Kennard's book on moisture and concrete related floors, um, you, you basically find out that it's gonna take you anywhere between 90 and 120 days or 15 to 30 days to get that to where you need it to be based on the thickness of that slab. Now, one of the things that actually creates that environment for moisture vapor emission rate is that higher water cementitious ratio and normally, with that excess water, that water of convenience, it doesn't say stay locked up in the mix. No, it actually gets squeezed to the surface because everything else in the concrete aside from the air is heavier than water. So any of that excess water is gonna be squeezed through the surface through these bleed channels to be called bleed water, which then the finishers finish back into the surface or we allow to dry at the surface. Now, the bad part about that bleed water, not only does it really just kill that first line of defense, but it also creates channels for moisture migration, for that moisture vapor emission rate that often leads to that moisture and those alkalis that break down that glue. So what colloidal silica does is actually hold that mix together, create more of a homogeneous mix. So we oftentimes see some internal curing that creates a concrete that's stronger and lasts longer, especially for that resilient flooring system. The second thing is densifying that hydrated cement matrix um, by filling the pores with more of the developed calcium silicate hydrate as well as those nanosilica sized particles in solution. Um, and that's a really important part, especially for that longevity because it's not just getting rid of those bleed channels, but it's also having a positive impact on densifying or reducing the permeability, the pore connectivity or the percolation or that microstructure of the hydrated cement matrix or backbone of concrete strength. The last thing is doing something with that bulk water. When we go through those different reaction types, especially using colloidal silica to kick off more of that accelerated cement dissolution as well as that instantaneous posilonic reaction, we do something with that water that's locked up in that more homogeneous mix. And originally where it would have just been poor water with uh, uh, soluble alkalis in it, now it's more chemically bound water that's locked up in either calcium silicate hydrate or even locked up in tighter pores that are not connected to adjacent pores 
based off of that percolation concept we just talked about. So uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, we are uh, definitely happy to bring you this information. Let us know if you got any concrete questions, concrete concerns. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ding that bell for notifications. Go Concrete!